This is Duke University. But, of course, um, dengue has to, uh, for the virus to be transmitted, the, the mosquito vector has to be there. Um, and it's one of the most prevalent, um, or I think the most prevalent, uh, uh, mosquito-transmitted viral disease in the world. Um, malaria is not a virus. That's why I don't say malaria. Um, but between 40 to 100 million cases per year. So I mentioned this envelope glycoprotein. Um, this is very important um, because uh, dengue actually has four different um, circulating serotypes. Um, it's not just uh, one strain like we can think of measles as. Um, it really exists as four different flavors or four serotypes. We have dengue one, two, three, and four. You can see here on this phylogenetic tree, um, these four serotypes are distinct genetically. Um, and, and from phylogenetic analysis, um, it actually seems like uh, those four serotypes haven't actually evolved in the human population, but rather there have been um, uh, uh, each one of these four serotypes have actually come from, from sylvatic hosts. Uh, just as an example of some of these population dynamics um, that, that I look at in, in, um, uh, in my research, um, here we have cases of dengue fever over time between 1975 and 2000 in Bangkok at a children's hospital. And some patterns you can see here, um, you see a long-term increase between these years, uh, but you also see periods of time where you have very low number of cases, and then uh, several years when you have much higher number of cases. So the question that I asked uh, with the collaborator Yoshi Nagao um, a couple of years ago was, um, how do we understand some of these temporal dynamics of dengue in Thailand? Um, specifically, uh, there's been a lot of effort put towards vector control in Thailand, so why haven't we seen a long-term decrease in Thailand's dengue hemorrhagic fever? So although this is dengue fever here, um, we see a similar pattern with dengue hemorrhagic fever um, that, that it's not um, declining in the long term, um, despite a lot of vector control. Um, so what this seems to indicate um, is, is just that, well, maybe vector control has been ineffective. Um, maybe the transmission of the virus um, is, uh, has been either relatively constant over this period of time um, or, or the transmission rate has increased. Um, but because there is immunity um, uh, from previous exposure to serotype, um, age can be used as, as a proxy um, for, for transmission rate um, so that as the mean age of infection increases, that mean transmission has to be decreasing. So how do we actually reconcile these two patterns? Why, if transmission rate is decreasing, why don't we see a decrease in cases? Um, so this is what uh, Yoshi came to me uh, uh, with this, this kind of paradox or this uh, predicament of, you know, why do we actually see these patterns? Age can be used as a very good proxy for transmission rate. So what's going on? Um, uh, so we, we first um, try to take some of the patterns that we saw um, with mean age of DHF patients and actually convert it to, uh, to values of R0, the basic reproduction number, um, which is a very well-known epidemiological quantity. And we can do this through actually using an approximation similar to, to this uh, lifespan over average age of infection, which has been looked at repeatedly in models of... Um, of disease dynamics. And here, what we see, um, as we saw with the Berteau index, um, is that at very low levels of R0, we have this positive relationship between DHF incidence and R0. Um, and higher R0, we have a negative relationship. So that it's this non monotonic relationship that we really want to be able to capture. What uh, Meredith Cameron, who's, a, who's an undergraduate, uh, she's a senior in the, in the, in the lab right now, um, she's doing an in independent study on trying to actually extend some of these models to look at what the effect of tetravalent vaccines are um, on, on dengue dynamics. Um, and so many of you have probably heard about the, the development of this tetravalent dengue vaccine. So it has uh, dengue 1, 2, 3, and 4 in it. Um, and, and there, there's, um, currently there's, there's a lot of talk about, uh, about um, uh, you know, what would happen if there's you know, pulse vaccination or continuous vaccination in places like Thailand. How would, how would vaccination actually protect not only the individual, but how would it actually change the population dynamics um, of, of, uh, of dengue? 
other work that's going on in the lab, uh, which I'm very excited about at this point, um, is looking at within serotype evolution of dengue virus. So all the models that are currently in the literature today um, are really only modeling these four distinct serotypes, and they're not looking uh, within the, those serotypes. But if you look within those serotypes, you can see that over the period uh, at the same time scale of these ecological dynamics, what we see are evolutionary dynamics of the virus. And so it's at this point unknown whether, um, whether those evolutionary dynamics of the virus are actually just, are the, is that just neutral genetic variation? Um, or do we see this type of turnover because there's escape from homologous immunity? So can people get reinfected um, with the same serotype years down the line? Or is there escape from heterologous cross-protection? Um, so if there's a change in one of these serotypes, um, does that, uh, um, does that al al allow it to infect someone who, who was considered cross-protected because of a previous uh, dengue infection? <laughs>